a common misconception that you have to be rich to travel. People are always asking me how I'm able to travel so much off of just a teaching salary. And the answer is I implement these budget travel tips and tricks that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. The budget travel tips that I'm going to be sharing in this video aren't going to be tips like work overseas. That's more for long-term travelers or backpackers. These are going to be helpful tips that are easy to implement on any trip, whether short-term or long-term. They are general budget travel tips that will help you save money on any trip. I'm going to be breaking down this video into transportation, accommodation, food, activities, finance, and then finally some general budget travel tips or like miscellaneous tips. First up, we have transportation. What you need to know about transportation is that public transportation is pretty much always going to be your cheapest option. And there are buses in pretty much every city I've ever been to that are very, very cheap. I'm talking like a dollar to get around the city, sometimes less than that, depending on where you are. So look into buses before looking into Ubers. Also check to see if the city has a metro that will also save you money as compared to something like an Uber. Now, if you're traveling a bit further away, such as one city to another city, then buses are usually going to be the cheapest option. You can still take flights. Sometimes there are really cheap flights across continents. For example, in Europe and Asia, they have a really good system of budget airlines. So look up budget airlines in the region that you're going to so you'll know what airlines to take. But keep in mind, budget airlines will try to get you on a lot of different things. Checked bags, carry-on, oversize, anything you could think of, budget airlines will try to get you on. When flying is too expensive, I will look into trains and buses. Even in general, I personally kind of prefer trains or buses anyway. Trains can be cheaper than flights. However, because of the budget airlines, especially in places like Europe, this is not always the case. I have personally found though that buses are pretty much always the cheapest option to get anywhere. For finding cheap flights, my number one tip is to do what's called reverse planning. This means that instead of having a destination in mind that you want to go to, you just browse for the cheapest flights available and you take the deal. You do this by going on a flight search engine such as Google Flights or Skyscanner and leaving your destination empty when you browse for flights. This will bring up the cheapest deals for your dates. Or if you have flexible dates, you can even browse for the whole month. Having flexible dates is also a major factor in finding good flight deals. So the biggest advice I could give you is to be flexible. However, I do have an entire video all about how to get cheap flights, so I'm not going to be going into it anymore in this video. I almost said in this detail, in this video. <laughs> Lastly, for transportation, you could look into hitchhiking. This one is more for the backpackers, but hitchhiking can be a fun way to get around. I have met so many backpackers who hitchhike on a regular basis. It's almost weird that I don't hitchhike regularly. The only place I have personally hitchhiked was in Guatemala and it wasn't the easiest place to find rides. <laughs> Of course, if you go this route, just make sure to research your destination, trust your instincts, and be careful. Now let's move into accommodation. The first thing that you need to know is that staying outside of the tourist areas or outside of the city center can save you a lot of money on accommodation. Then you could just take the bus or the train into the city center every day, and that's usually going to be a lot cheaper. As I have previously mentioned, usually it's only a couple of dollars, if that, to get into the city center, so it still is a good deal. I have, however, had people, mostly in the comments, try to tell me that it is more expensive to do this because of the cost to get in. I think if you're Ubering, yes, that's true. Most of the time though, trains and buses won't cost you that much in my experience, even in expensive countries. However, look it up and do your research because if it is about the same price, then it's much easier to just stay in the city center. Don't waste your time coming all the way into it if it's a similar price. All that being said, I do personally like to stay in the city center, but I normally stay in hostels to do this. Hostels are always in the center of town and everything is pretty much walkable. So that's one reason I really like hostels because it's super cheap and it's in a good location. So look into hostels. If I'm not staying in a hostel though, I will rarely stay in the center of town. Now, when I do stay in hotels, if that hotel or hostel or anything is offering free breakfast, I always try to take the free breakfast. It just saves money. That way I don't have to go out and find my own breakfast and spend money. But if the hotel does not offer free breakfast and they're offering an incentive where you have to pay extra for the free breakfast, I never pay for it. 
and I recommend you don't either if you're trying to save money. Going out and finding your own breakfast, I can almost guarantee you is going to be cheaper than eating there at the hotel. Another thing to look out for is extra costs. In Fiji, they waited until I got to my hostel room to tell me that they were going to charge me an extra $50 a day for food. That's a lot when you're backpacking. Also, that bottled water you see sitting on the desk when you walk into your hotel, yet it's usually not free, so don't drink it. Another option other than hotels is guest houses. Again, in Fiji, I pay $25 per night for my own room on an island with all the food included. Resorts charge hundreds of dollars per night for that. I also got discounted rates on things like my snorkeling trips because it was cheaper to go through the host family than it was at the big resort. So don't forget about guest houses when you are planning your accommodation. And if you are wondering how much I spent while I was in Fiji or if it's possible to travel Fiji on a budget, I actually made a video about that where I shared exactly how much I spent while I was there. Finding accommodation that has a kitchen, such as an Airbnb, can also save you a lot of money, especially if you're in a country that's more expensive and that eating out costs a ton of money. Places like here in California. <laughs> Hostels usually have kitchens, especially in more expensive parts of the world, and they are always the cheapest option. I almost always stay in hostels, and I do recommend them for budget travelers. In addition to a cheap stay, you're also going to meet tons of other travelers that are going to give you tips on things to do, things to see, and how to save money while you're in that destination. That's all for accommodation, but I will be coming out with a full deep dive into accommodation hacks pretty soon, so make sure you're subscribed if that is something you'd like to see. Right now, we're going to move into food. There are lots of sneaky ways to save money on food. Did you know that a lot of countries have lunch specials, especially in Europe? So what I do is I'll eat out for lunch and then I'll cook my own meal at home. And that brings me right into my next point, which is you can cook your own meals because that is going to save you a lot of money. When you do eat out, look out for tourist restaurants that are super overpriced and are less authentic than the cheaper options. These are usually in tourist areas and the food is rarely as good. My general rule is to avoid eating out when I'm inside a tourist location, such as the main old town square. I will say that street food is usually fine. For example, Koh San Road in Thailand, they have a ton of street food and it might be cheaper to get street food elsewhere. However, street food's already like $2. So I would just get it there because that's where my hostel is and it's just more convenient. So let's go ahead and talk street food. Street food is my favorite way to eat. It's also hands down the cheapest and honestly, it tastes the best. You will usually pay less than $1 at the cheap end and up to $5 at the more expensive end. But this is usually in more expensive countries. Street food is so cheap and so good. When I travel, I literally live off of street food. I very rarely eat anything else. I almost never go to a sit down restaurant. That's only for like fancy occasions. If you're worried about getting sick, cause I know that is a worry for a lot of people. There are things to look out for to make sure that you're eating in a good spot. So number one, do your research on the best street food locations and the best street food vendors in that destination. Ask around, ask others what their favorite food is. And also just pay attention and look to see what seems really popular, what always has a long line, what always has a lot of people around it because people don't keep going back to places that make them sick. Like that wouldn't make sense. So the popular places will usually not make you sick. Plus, I could go into it a little bit more. A big misconception is it's the food that makes you sick when it's actually usually the water, but that's for a different video. When you do go to restaurants, don't assume that everything is going to be free. A lot of restaurants look way different than what you're going to be used to back home. For example, when they bring out that bread and butter in some places, that's not free. They're gonna charge you for that if you eat it. Drink refills, also usually not free if you're outside of the US. So make sure you do your research so you're not overpaying without realizing it. This last one is a big one, but people always hate this tip too. It is to reduce the amount of alcohol that you drink. Alcohol adds up really quickly. So if you wanna save money, that's what you should cut back on. Yes, especially if you're backpacking. I'm not saying that you should cut it out completely. I'm just saying that cutting back will help you save some money. Now we're moving into activities. Number one, if you have a student discount card, use it. This can save you money on lots of attractions. Many people don't know this, but there's a lot of other discount cards besides just student discount cards. One example could be your job. So for example, I'm a teacher, so I have an ID me. If you live in the States, teachers, firefighters and police officers fall into this category called like an ID me discount. And we get discounts on all kinds of attractions and like theme parks. One year I even got a free year pass to SeaWorld because I was a teacher. 
So just keep in mind that even if you're not a student, you may have other discount cards available to you. So make sure you do your research on that. City passes can also be really great value. City passes are passes that give you access to multiple attractions in that city. So you pay one time, but you have access to multiple attractions. These have the potential to save you lots of money, but not always. You're going to have to plan out your trip here and do some math to see if it's going to be worth it. See what's included in the pass and see if you are already planning on going to that attraction or to that landmark. Then add up how much it would cost to go to those attractions without the pass. If it's more expensive, then get the pass. If it's not, then don't get the pass. The majority of activities I do when I travel are free activities. You can't go wrong with a good free activity. These include things like hikes, walking around and exploring, and also free walking tours. Free walking tours are a great way to get to know a new city because you get to walk around and learn a little bit about the history and also just orient yourself with the city. Keep in mind that they are not actually free, even though they're called free walking tours, you do have to tip your guides. Another tip to help you save money on activities is to try your best to avoid excursions. Instead, just try to get there yourself. There are usually trains or buses that will get you there. In Mexico, for example, we paid 30 cents for a bus ride to get us to a different town that we wanted to go to where the excursion for it was $100. So don't underestimate how much you could actually save by not doing the excursion. This does not work every time, especially if you are around the water, like snorkeling trips, diving trips. There's always reasons why you have to go with a group. Trust me, I still go with a group all the time. I just hiked a volcano in Guatemala and of course I went with a guide for that. But when it is possible and available to you, try to go without the excursion if it is safe to do so. Now let's talk about some money or some finance related tips that's gonna save you a ton of money when you're overseas. These tips seem so small, yet they're so important and they add up so much over time. So let's talk about it. Number one, if you are tracking your money, you are going to spend less. This is true at home and while traveling. Set a budget and track your spending each day to see if you're falling within this budget. If you are not tracking it as you go, you're not going to be able to make adjustments. Then you're going to get home and realize that you overspent by thousands of dollars and now it's too late, you're just out that money. Most backpackers already do this because we don't want to run out of money, but it does work for shorter trips as well. I can promise you that if you are not tracking your money, you're going to be overspending. In order to properly track my spending, I use the XC Currency Exchange app. It is the best app for tracking money because it does the conversion for you in real time. Don't guess or estimate how much you're spending, know how much you're spending. Let's talk ATMs. Be careful at ATMs because they will try to scam you. When the ATM asks you to accept their conversion rate, don't. Let your bank do the conversion rate. ATMs will inflate the conversion rate and try to steal as much money from you as they can. Always decline this and let your bank do the conversion instead. Another thing to be aware of is that ATMs charge you for using them and so do your debit cards or your bank cards. This is why you should have an international debit card because an international debit card is not going to charge you for withdrawing money from an ATM. If you're an American, I would highly recommend you look into Charles Schwab. Not only do they not have any ATM fees, but they also reimburse you for the fees the ATM charges. So if the ATM has a $10 withdrawal fee, Charles Schwab will literally give you that $10 back so you're spending absolutely nothing to withdraw cash. This is the only US-based card that I know of that does this. ATMs have really high fees, so this can save you hundreds of dollars if you travel often. Along with an international debit card, you should also get a travel credit card that you can use overseas without being charged extra. Your credit card will charge you a small percentage or a small extra amount if you try to use it when you're not in the country. This is called a foreign transaction fee, but if you have a travel credit card, you will not be charged this foreign transaction fee. Travel credit cards also allow you to rack up points and miles that you could use for free flights and free hotel stays. They also come with other perks too, such as airport lounge access, global entry, and more. Although you should have a travel credit card, keep in mind that cash is still king and you should be using it as much as possible. Many countries will charge you extra to use card. This goes for big purchases as well. 
it's usually a percentage of the total amount. So if you're paying for a big purchase, you're going to have a higher rate that you're paying like in interest. There is no reason to waste so much extra money. They're kind of scamming you by doing this because a lot of people don't even know that it's charging them extra. So keep this in mind and instead of using your credit card or your debit card just take out the cash if you have an international debit card that is completely free to withdraw cash such as the one i just talked about then it's going to cost you nothing to just use the cash you should also avoid paying in us dollars even if they take it it's usually costing you more money because of a bad exchange rate it's better to just pay in the local currency if you have us dollars to exchange be careful who you trust to exchange it I personally never used TravelX. I tried to use them one time and they lied to me about the exchange rate. I know because I had the exchange rate on my phone using the app that I told you about. Plus they tried to charge me $20 on top of that for using their service. That was several years ago. Hopefully they've gotten better over time as people have started traveling smarter, but it still goes to show that you should be careful who you trust. I prefer to avoid all of this and just use a debit card to withdraw cash. Lastly, let's talk about general budget travel tips or some miscellaneous budget travel tips. Try to travel in the off season or the shoulder season if possible. Basically, avoid peak season. Peak season is when all the tourists are there and for that reason, prices for everything are inflated. By avoiding these times of year, you're going to have less crowds, you'll save money, and you'll overall have a more enjoyable experience. Just do your research because a lot of places have really harsh weather at certain times of year that you're going to want to avoid, such as hurricanes. The shoulder season will be just after the peak season, so you still have better weather, but the majority of crowds have already left. But if you could only travel during the peak season because maybe your kids are in school, trust me, I get it. I'm a teacher. I could only travel summer break, winter break, spring break, you know, the most expensive times of year to travel to most places. But all of these other budget travel tips that I have shared with you will also help you in saving money. But if you work a job that allows you to travel during other times of year, I would try to take advantage of that. Also try to pick destinations where your money is going to go further. Budget destinations include places like Southeast Asia, Eastern Europe, and Central America. Picking more affordable destinations will save you more money than anything else I have mentioned is going to. Traveling slower will also save you a lot of money because you're going to be cutting transportation costs. Staying in a place for a few extra days or cutting out some destinations altogether will allow you to have a deeper experience and it's also going to save you money. If you're going to go on an extended backpacking trip or a gap year, slow travel is going to make your trip so much more affordable. This one should go without saying, yet so many people still make this mistake. Do not pay $10 a day for an international phone plan. Instead, get a SIM card. You could get a SIM card literally for that amount of money. That's going to be good the entire month. Better than a traditional SIM card is an eSIM. If you have not yet heard of an eSIM, an eSIM is an electronic SIM card. It's just an app that you're going to download and then you could just switch your phone over to that new eSIM line, such as Guatemala. And then you could download it and have it ready to go before you even leave your home country. E-SIMs are a bit more expensive than traditional SIM cards, but are worth it in my opinion. They're just so easy and convenient. I recommend Olafly. They're the best rated eSIM program. And if you use my link, you're gonna get 5% off your purchase as well. And finally, I always travel with travel insurance. I want to be covered in case I get sick and end up having to go to the doctor during my stay. This is something that protects both my wallet and my health, and it's something that I encourage you to look into as well. This felt like a very long video, but I hope you learned something new. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next adventure.